Well, Leslie and I thought it was a pretty amazing coincidence that um, this story of St. Stephen just happened to show up as the lectionary text scheduled for today, the Sunday that we kind of randomly selected to co commission our Stephen ministers. We were thinking that maybe if they had all um, read this story in the Bible before starting their 50 hours of classes, they might not, never have signed up. <laughs> Congratulations, Stephen Ministers. Welcome to the world of Christian ministry where you're likely to preach the wrong sermon and get stoned to death. <laughs> you can see, though, that on the back of our bulletin, we print every week with the staff listing. The first item is the ministers of the church are listed as all the members of the church. Even the word laity, which we often use, is derived from the Greek word for work. So we're all about the work of the church. I um, thought it was appropriate that I dress today in my street clothes like um, the rest of you, emphasizing that the laity are also members of the church and workers in it. The, um, even the phrase uh, man or woman of the cloth, you might not know, comes from this cloth the stole that we get uh, at ordination, which was originally um, a servant towel. Remember how um, Jesus knelt at the feet of the disciples and washed their feet in service, and they um, wrapped the towel around themselves, then the disciples to wash one another's feet. Well, this was used in the early church to wipe the rim of the chalice as the communion was served, and now it's beautiful and looks very special. But it's a reminder of my service to Christ Church, as we all are called to serve. But the thing that I think is a shame is we don't typically think of church membership as a dangerous life choice. We don't think of it as being a very risky decision to serve the church. In fact, I would say um, the reason most people say no to our nominating committee when they're asked to serve is, I don't have enough time, not I don't want to risk my neck, I don't want to risk getting killed. But some of you have heard me say before that there are many rich layers of meaning to what Jesus said in John's Gospel, those famous words, greater love has no one than this, to lay down his or her life for a friend. Many of us, whether or not we get paid for our service, have taken the time to actually lay down something else we might have been doing to help out at the church. It often takes a very real sacrifice of time. And today's text, I think, is a good one because it reminds us of how ancient and how necessary that tradition of service is. All helpers who serve in any kind of background or backup position at a church are doing ministry for Christ, whether or not they ever stand up in this pulpit to preach the gospel with words. From our ushers who come a little bit early to worship, to set up and stay a few minutes late to clean up, to Morrison's gang who comes nearly every Tuesday to do physical repairs to the church property, to our church school teachers, youth leaders, confirmation mentors, who all are doing their best to preach and teach the gospel to the next generation of disciples. All of these lay ministers and many more are walking in the tradition of St. Stephen and Philip and those other five who um, we were not brave enough to try to pronounce from the pulpit today. <laughs> All of those, plus many nameless more, have served to make Christ's ministry possible in the world. So I think it's helpful that we read at the beginning of this passage that the church has always struggled with the challenge that it is to get all of the work done that Christ calls us to do. The church has always relied upon faithful volunteers did you catch how at the beginning of chapter six, the reason the church first appointed these Stephen ministers is that people were starting to complain that the church was growing so fast, so many new converts were joining up, 
that the 12 first disciples could no longer manage the workload. It seems that the new um, Greek or Hellenist Christians were complaining that the older Hebrew Christians were getting better food service for their friends, for their widows. You see, deacons out there, it has always been about the holy hot dish of the church. The casseroles that are delivered to the doors of the bereaved, it's right there in the Bible. Caring angels have always been called to prepare and serve food to the church, to the world. Real hands-on care has always been the holiest of work. And so the early church lays on hands in this passage and commissions these first seven lay ministers who could help with the distribution of food to the needy widows and orphans of their community. And I think we in our busy world today could maybe take some comfort in knowing that the church, even back there in the beginning times of the book of Acts, was joining together, person by person, to get all the work done that we feel called to do. But the amazing thing, the most important thing I think to notice is when people actually do, people like us, take time to actually practice our faith in everyday life, it shocks the rest of the world. The rest of the world that thinks what we're about in our faith is coming in to these doors and closing them behind us to sit on these pews and pray some mumbo jumbo thing or another. We're about so much more. And when people see that, they're inspired, they're amazed, they see Christ's work out there in the world, and most of the time, they're inspired to join us. I was so amazed the first time we did refugee resettlement, how many people from out in the community couldn't wait to step in and help. And every year with the Yankee Fair, we have additional friends and neighbors who say, well, I don't go for that churchy stuff, but I'll help in the such and such booth on Yankee Fair. This is important ministry, and it leads to church growth. Even our Stephen ministry program, which we lift up and celebrate today, it's just one way that our church reaches out to bear witness to the love of Christ for the world with real gifts of time and talent, caring listening, a helping hand. But there is so much more ministry we all know about, from the Yankee Fair to the many mission trips to the prayer shawl and blanket ministries. The, just think of the 18 projects that our confirmands were able to do for us this year. 18 confirmands, 18 projects. That's an important statement that our church makes, that we think it's a huge part of church membership to offer real effort in time and talent and service to the church. And so we owe, though, a special thanks to all of those who have gone before us, the saints of the past who've built up this church with their own hands, many of them, but also to those who've kept our Stephen Ministry program going here at the church. We thank Marion Miller and Harry Giroux especially for their visionary leadership in times past, along with Al, of course, and saints of the past who've gone before, like Jenny Van Horn, Claire Horner, and uh, Janet McGovern, who've moved on. But we thank also Leslie Sands, who um, has done such an amazing job of renewing and revitalizing this program for the future. We are grateful for these five women, Wendy, Desiree, Lori, Sharon, and Cindy, who are about to come forward to be commissioned, to, who have committed themselves already to this um, long time of training and have volunteered to help with um, a couple of years of service to those who might feel the need for a Stephen minister. So I want to end with an appeal to you all to support the work of these Stephen ministers um, by praying for them, by asking for their care if you think you might need it. Think of suggesting their help to a friend as well, whether someone inside the church or outside the church. And the next time that we offer this kind of training for becoming a Stephen minister, we hope that you men especially 
will come forward to be trained. Since we, uh, this is a kind of caregiving that is um, woman to woman and man to man, um, we need you men to uh, reach out and care for other men of the church. Remember how in his own ministry, however brief, Saint Stephen was able to do great wonders and signs among the people. So let us give thanks to God for the honor that is still shown to us by this call to service in Christ's name. Amen.